Hey everyone, my name is Steve Teeps, and I just wanted to record a quick tutorial on how I go about cleaning up block out mesh pieces with DynaMesh and ZBrush and bring them down to workable, clean form geometry for stylized sculpting as well as hard surface modeling. And we're going to use ZRemesher and ZModeler tools. As you can see here, I've been sculpting this character this last week or so. Um, this is just about an hour and a half block in right now with a bit of polish maybe for another hour on some of the face pieces. And this is um, a design by an amazing illustrator named Nicola. I'm going to butcher his last name, so I'm going to put it in the description below. But it's just a redesign of uh, Marvel's Daredevil, and I've been having fun just kind of practicing some sculpting techniques on it. All right, so let's just dive right in. We're going to go down to the geometry menu here. I'm going to try to keep this as default UI as possible. Now we're going to turn DynaMesh off if it's on already. And under ZRemesher, the default settings are going to put on Adapt. This is If you open yours up, you're going to see this right here. You're going to see uh, 5 target polygon count and Adapt. Detect Edges is a new setting that allows ZBrush's algorithm for when it's running this remeshing process to try to keep the edges as defined as possible when you're running this algorithm. So I find that really helpful when I have a shape already kind of planned out in my head like this one where we have these dips in this curve here. I want to keep those general outlines, so I'm leaving Detect Edges on. So let's just hit zero measure. This is just default settings, what, you, what anyone else would see when they open up this app and use this uh, algorithm. Now, this is where a lot of people kind of stop using zero measure, and this is what they assume it does. And so you can see it gave us way more manageable geometry. It brought it down to 11,000, but you can still see all those shapes, the lumps. It's not clean at all. Now, this is the default settings. What's cool about ZRemesher that a lot of people don't seem to know is that you can rerun this algorithm as many times as you want, actually, with different settings. So I turn Adapt off, and I turn on Half now that I have a general shape I like and it's more manageable. Leaving Detect Edges on, we're going to hit ZRemesher again, and you're going to see how it's bringing down the geo faster and faster because it's giving less geometry each time, but it's actually subdividing it by half or uh, it's having the geometry every single time you click the zero measure button. So you're going to keep doing this until you get lower and lower poly, and you'll start to see all those bumpiness kind of go away slowly. Um, the nice thing about this is you can just keep doing it until it gets to a shape that you think is retaining most of the form you want. Now, um, you can start to see how you can get really low poly, and you can keep going all the way down to something that completely just destroys itself because you're just having it over and over again and it doesn't have enough polys to go with. So you can see how you can just bring it down to something crazy. Now, eventually you'll get it to something like this where I kind of just duplicated this piece already. This was just running the same technique, keeping it at a manageable level, but it's not perfect yet. So if you remember, we were here, lumpy DynaMesh, it was 273,000 polygons, and then we got it to something like uh, this here which is 376 polygons and very manageable. So I'm going to solo this piece now, and we're going to figure out how to fix some of the extra stuff on here. So one thing I like to do really quickly is I just use a big brush with smooth, and I turn the intensity on the smooth down to something like 60, and I just come in here and I just smooth out the edges. And you can see how it took away all that kind of jaggedness. Now it made this piece a little thin here, so another thing I like to do is use the inflate brush and I kind of just go lightly over the edges and it will inflate out those pieces. Now you just got to remember that even when you're working in low polys in ZBrush, you can still use all these sculpting tools to your advantage, which I think to, as someone that sculpts digitally all the time, it's way more natural for me to use tools like this than it is something like poly modeling in Maya. Um, so we have this kind of nice clean shape. I'm going to uncrease all the edges here so there's no creasing. Now, the way you can check if a piece is going to subdivide cleanly or not is using something called dynamic subdivision inside of ZBrush. The default is just hitting the D key, and you will see that it's going to smooth out those that piece for you. Now, this actually hasn't applied any subdivision. It's actually just giving you a preview of what it could look like when you actually subdivide it again. You can get back to it by hitting Shift D, so I constantly am hitting D and Shift D to go back to what the piece was. Now, before we get into cleaning up a little bit more, let's say you want to lower the polygon count even further on this, but the zero mesher algorithm is starting to give you, it's starting to break the shape any further past this, right? So we're going to use something called the Z modeler brush, which is the low poly modeling tool in ZBrush. This is 
away by default, when you hover over an edge and hold alt, you're actually gonna be able to erase that edge. And so I can come in here and go every other polygon or so and um, actually clean up. Now we have down to 224 polygons and have one big flat face. Now you might see how it breaks something, so we might wanna leave that piece in there and just move this polygon, these polygons down. So you can see how if you're really on a budget for polygon count, you can come in and remove this stuff. Now here's a neat little trick too, is if you don't even see this piece, you hold Alt and you can just highlight over all these pieces here on the back side and on the faces, if you hit spacebar, choose delete, you can just click those and when we hit double, you now have a, a open backed mesh. Now, one thing I just thought I would show you in this tutorial is um, with ZModeler, they added something in the new version for edge extrude finally. So this is something you're used to in poly modeling tools, but if you wanted to close that piece back up, you could actually hover over an edge, hit extrude, and it's going to allow you to, if I do, do nothing on faces, um, you're going to be able to come down here and actually close these pieces by extruding the edges, which this is very much something that's brand new to ZBrush that we didn't have before. You used to have to use bridge mode and it wasn't as clean. This is something you're used to in other poly modeling apps. And this is super helpful when you just want to clean up the geo that might be kind of wonky on the backside. And the nice thing is, is it snaps to the edges. So you kind of have to bring it close enough and it will kind of do the rest for you. And now, bam, you have a very clean piece of geometry and it's only 228 polygons. And when we subdivide it, you see it's a lot cleaner. Now, to even get this better with crisp edges, we need to do something called creasing. So if we hover over an edge with Z Modeler, hold space, go to crease and do edge loop partial, you can come here and click edges like this click something like this and what any edge you click on it's basically going to keep crisp so now when we hit D you can see how those pieces have a very defined edge to them and you come to the back side crease those same edges that you did on the front to try to maintain that and now you can see that this piece has a very clean edge and you can come here increase as many as you want if you hold alt it will undo that so if you don't like something and how it's how it's clicking here um, so if you want to retain these edges as hard edges, you just hit D. Now the cool thing is with this dynamic subdivision level on, you can actually leave it in this mode and live click on these pieces here and it will dynamically crease them as you're clicking on it. And you can just hit shift D to go back to wherever you were. We're just going to undo a couple of these edges because we don't need to do that. So I like how it's rounding there on the edge. The cool thing is, is if you like the piece you have, you just hit control D a few times and subdivide and boom, you have a super clean piece of geometry. And if you really want to, you can come in here with a light H polish and kind of polish it up. But um, yeah, you can see how really quickly, once you learn the Z modeler tool, you can kind of have more control over your edges, and your edge flow, and you now have a piece of geometry that's super clean. And we took it from, if you remember, we had this piece here, it was all wobbly, wobbly and dynamesh, and we brought it down to something like this. And now obviously you would have to bring in those shapes back again, and you can just lower your subdivision levels and come in here and refine the shape however you'd like. But you have low poly geo that makes movements a lot easier. And without sculpting anything, you can retain the shape of it and have clean forms a lot faster. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how I go about cleaning up all these pieces. This also helps immensely when you're trying to UV map something. I'll do that for another video where I do some UV master tutorials. But um, you now have a very low poly base mesh that has creased edges that is very easy for you to work with.